Hello fellow shapers, um, very crisp, gorgeous morning, a little bit of mist hanging around as you often get with the, the frosts, um, it's probably about zero, one degree maybe, but it will heat up, but we've got a very picturesque scenery at the moment, I thought this would be a good time to start another one of my trees which is going to be this time round the hazel tree. We are now the beginning of February and there is some very definite signs for distinguishing the hazelnut if you look around now. It's quite a distinctive plant anyway but I thought I'd show you it. We've got one that's large enough to probably produce actual hazelnuts because it does take a while and they need to be well established before they actually do that um, and it's very distinctive this hasn't been coppiced you can tell because of the different um, ages with the branches they're all there's every kind of age of branch in there um, I have actually done a bit of work with this one myself and will do as well. I plan to run off um, a, a little fence from here and hopefully produce some nice straight spear type growths from it. Um, so that's work in progress. Can't do that yet. It's a little bit early um, but I have done this before and it's um, it's quite pleasing. There is actually some really good examples of uh, hazel fences if you look around on the uh, www um, around the UK where oh, they're stunning to look at and all they have done is just half cut the branch, a little bit more than half cut the branch and leaned it over um, and then sort of tie it in amongst the fence posts and whatnot. It's um, a traditional skill and you can tell that when you look at some of these fences. It's, it is a skill. So I shall be trying to brush up on that. Right so here we have the catkins in full sun and it's quite beautiful. There isn't much on the trees this time of year. Um, they're quite an early bird, the hazel. Uh, this is the male catkins that um, they were a lot tighter together you might find some on the floor but they're already spreading their seed like you can see when you run your hands down it there's a little dust the pollen coming off so shortly after these we will get the little female flowers that like I mentioned earlier and they will usually appear around the same place as these. Um, they're already getting very soft and that's one of their nicknames is lamb's tail um, because of the feel of them. It's a beautiful thing just to feel. It feels like soft wool at this stage. These ones are still a little bit closed. That's how they would have looked about a month ago. Um, but yeah, they're, they're all opening now and spreading their pollen. I'd like to think you could see that dust. A quick look around the, the ground, around the tree here. It's not always a good indication um, because obviously you've got a variety of leaves here that are nothing to do with hazel uh, that have been blown in from all directions but uh, the leaf let's try the leaf first this is obviously an old leaf but it is shows you the rough shape and size that a mature one can get to it's only the mature ones that will do this and it's only the mature ones that will give you the nuts so um, it's roughly a heart shape uh, oval heart shape um, it will have a point on the top 
uh, much like this one. A point on the top and usually one each side there and it will continue around. But the prominent ones are these three. They will stick up like horns. The stem structure is uh, alternate, it's not symmetrical. In the May, when these leaves will be about, they will be very soft, dowry, furry, um, hairy. It's hairy hazel, but it's very fine, smooth hair on the leaf. Much like the catkins when they turn into lambs tails, they, um, there's a smoothness with this tree. So that's one of the sensors that's identified it really, just by touch alone. And also on the floor here you will find a splattering of nutshells. Here we've got one that's actually got no obvious signs of being opened, but the squirrels are pretty good at deciding what is good and what is bad before they even um, open it. So I'm imagining this is bad. Um, but there will be a lot of casings uh, also scattered around left. There's another one. Yeah, they feel very light, so I would be very surprised if there was something in there. It's hard to beat the squirrels to them. The grey squirrels um, have a passion for these things. Uh, don't know. But yeah, so you can easily spot it on the floor as well. So here we have a cutting from last year, um, and already it is um, growing new growth to replace the old and so long as you don't hammer it um, well you can coppice this whole thing really um, and by coppicing it you can actually extend its life a bit but my method is I think a little bit better for doing this than coppicing I like to see all the different ages of the tree in this crown um, or nest there's a few terms for it but we have a leaf which is very unusual. It's a bit early for it, definitely. I'm, I'm wondering what's what this tree or this particular one I cut is thinking. Having a little leaf like that out this early. It's only just turned February. Um, and there's also lots of other little buds there that are gonna produce leaves. But yeah, it, that now is gonna go straight up as long as nothing's in the way. So that healed itself nicely. And here you can see my work from uh, two years ago. Uh, no, three. Three years ago now. Um, where it has been layered. All I've done was bent a branch over. I wonder if the old branch is still there. Yeah, that would have been that branch there, which was a very small, thin branch there. Sorry about my camera work. And right next to it, <laughs> there is another one to replace it. And this one is ideal because it's slightly green, which means it's very supple. It's very hairy and it will actually bend over on itself and you can actually just put it into the ground and hope for the best. And life has a way of wanting to live, and it quite often does. This was one that I leaned over three years ago, and it's already produced pretty much a whole crown. Um, there's lots of new growth coming on it. I, I could e probably pull this out of the ground actually very easily, so I'm not gonna play around with that too much as I'd like to create a little natural fence along the side of this footpath here. Um, so again this year I will clear space over here for another runner to come over and run from there over to the next crown. 
All right, now I've got to walk back to my camp, so I guess we could have a little chat about um, what you can use it for. Um, obviously, fencing, um, it's very supple, so anything that you need to bend, much like willow, maybe not quite as bendy as some of the varieties of willow, but hazel still has its place. Um, my tent currently is made out of hazel poles. Um, which is a dome tent. Uh, it can be made into arches whilst it's alive or fences while it's alive. There's a lot of uses for it in the crafts um, industry. Also uh, thatchers use it for pinning down the reeds on top of the houses, um, they make a U-shapes out of it and use the U-shaped piece of hazel to pin down the reeds. So it's got a lot of traditional uses, it's got a lot of uh, practical uses. Um, it burns okay, it's very rapid when it's dried. It uh, You won't get much burn time but it will be an in short intense heat. So. Other than that, it's okay. I haven't actually tried burning a large piece of it, so I don't know what it's like uh, from a mature piece. But the dead bits that are laying around the tree, or in the tree even, they're worth having. There's no toxicity about it, about where any problems abnormally. A very forgiving tree and a very providing tree. It provides lots of um, habitat and helps nature no end. Um, we go into folklore. The folklore of the hazel is, uh, as you can imagine, quite large. Uh, but I'll just go over a couple of the interesting stories with it because I find that the stories you can then often remember. Um, this is my favourite story with the hazel. That there was nine magical hazel trees around a magical pond uh, that contained salmon, as the salmon was often worshipped as well. Uh, being such a high protein food, I guess, you know, it, it would have been a valuable source, such as the nuts from the hazel tree, as it goes very high in protein. So again, this is why it's very popular and has lots of stories. But these nine magic trees around this magic pool with the salmon in, um, it's said that the for every spot that a salmon has, uh, is a hazelnut that it's eaten. Uh, the more spots and the more hazelnuts that it's eaten from the magical hazel tree uh, gives it more wisdom and the abilities of prophecy to be able to predict as well. So it's got a lot of magical properties. So uh, there's a specific story where um, a, a higher class of monk went to uh, go fishing and he caught a salmon that was claimed to have eaten all of the nuts from this pool of wisdom. Um, so he thought, well, okay, so I'm going to eat this and I shall know, have uh, the, you know, total wisdom um, about everything, generally. So he caught this fish that um, it must have been quite a spotty fish I imagine but yes apparently he caught this fish and he took it home and he got his servants to cook it as they cooked it um, a bit of it the fat um, from it spat onto his fat his fingers and to sort of calm the burn as you often would you would put it in your mouth and so he absorbed a piece of the wisdom um, and the high cleric, whatever monk, 
was unable to achieve 100% wisdom and to know everything due to that. Make of that what you will, but yeah, it's seen across a couple of cultures with this sacred pool. Um, it's probably just spread from one culture to a couple of others, but it is a common theme um, with these nine magical hazel trees around the sacred pool of wisdom. So, make sure you get your new teller in you. Might get a bit of wisdom and plenty of salmon. And don't complain if it's spotty. Um, that's the most interesting folklore story I found anyway. Uh, there is a whole shed load of stories about it because it is a provider of food a very valuable source of food in the form of a nut um, and it's very farmable much more so in previous years and years gone but um, yeah it would have definitely been a, a very large source of protein back in the day which would have been very needed uh, the leaves are the first and last really they will appear before most leaves do um, and they also also stay on the tree one of the longest as well so they kind of like to hold on to their leaves a bit and you will probably recognize the leaf you, you probably know the leaf without even knowing you know the leaf because it's uh, a common symbol that's been used I think by Nutella and various hazelnut products where they put the leaf on it so you probably recognize the leaf it will seem familiar, uh, familiar to you it did to me anyway so that just about wraps up the amazing hazel I'm now going to get a cup of coffee and try and warm up because my hands are absolutely frozen it's uh, a very, very pretty day, but also just it's got a bit of a bite. So, thanks for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves. And as a reward for your efforts, nature provides. She always does. So, we've got a nice bit of dry wood here. It's very dry because it's been standing mostly for the most part in the middle of that crown and drying for the last year at least. Since I last tidied it up. And there is a little bit of a technique for carrying the wood. Um, it's a toggle. But what I tend to do is never have it directly in the middle just have it left of centre or right of centre depending on your preference and then use your toggle just to kind of wrench them nice and tightly I like to just wrap it around a couple of times really just to be sure that, that holds because it can slip with a bit of a jiggle mm. yeah. so that's toggled uh, now I can hold the front end of it more because the back end has been tied and the front end Instead of adding another toggle, I just make my arm be the toggle, really. And I find this way you don't get caught in between all the trees and things and barging your way through the woods or whatever. But yeah, if you haven't got a toggle, get one. I've made a video about those before. 
um, this amazing old technique with many uses and like I say you help nature a little bit she helps you